Hello again everyone, it's been a little while since my last date video, but we are back and ready to jump into yet another video. Pack some shades, some suntan lotion, and some hiking boots, because we are off to Arizona. So when most people think of Arizona, their mind wanders to the northwestern part of the state, and there's this really big thing there, it's called the Grand Canyon, we'll talk about it in a bit. Oh, and one more thing. Typically, I like to wear something having to do with the state for each episode. For today, I couldn't find an Arizona t-shirt, but I do have this snapback from a brand called State 48. This isn't sponsored or anything, although if you're watching and you want to sponsor me, that's great. But I really like it, and it has to do with Arizona. Now, on to the flag. Arizona's flag has long been considered to be one of the best and most beautiful state flags, and rightfully so. Arizona's flag is divided into two parts. On top are 13 alternating red and gold stripes, meant to represent the 13 stripes of the American flag. The bottom half is a blue field. In the center is a star, commonly colored copper, to represent the copper mining industry. Oh, by the way, Arizona produces the most copper out of any state in the U.S. However, uncommon variations have that star colored white, as the star's color isn't actually dictated by law. The stripes are supposed to represent the rays of the setting sun, and the red is the red of the American flag. The blue also comes from the American flag and represents the Colorado River. Blue and gold are Arizona state colors, and red and gold came from the Spanish flags that explorer Francisco Vázquez de Coronado carried on his expedition to the Seven Cities of Cibola, one of the first expeditions to the state. Arizona's flag does not feature its state seal, so let's talk about it. Arizona's seal is interesting because it has both a black and white and a color edition. The black and white is the official seal, but they seem to be used interchangeably, and I like the color version better, so that's the one we'll be using. Around the border it reads, the great seal of the state of Arizona and the year 1912 on the bottom, which is the year that Arizona became a state. Inside the ring lies a little shield, the top part of which displays the state motto, Didat Deus, or God and Riches. Towards the back lies the rising sun over the mountain peaks, leading into a reservoir or a man-made lake, symbolizing Arizona's dry and sunny climate. In the middle of the seal is an irrigated field and an orchard for, sharp, for farming, and some grazing cattle to represent ranching. In the lower left of the shield is a miner with a pick and shovel and a quartz mill to represent the extensive mining industry in Arizona. Arizona's capital and largest city is Phoenix, which is also the fifth largest city by population in the United States and the only U.S. capital with a population over one million. Phoenix is located on the Salt River, near its confluence with the Gila River, right there. Phoenix is the central city in the Valley of the Sun or the Salt River Valley metropolitan area, which is the largest metro in Arizona and the 11th largest in the United States. A big reason for Phoenix's growth is because Arizona lies in a region of the U.S. called the Sun Belt, which extends from southern Florida all the way to southern California and is characterized by its warm summers and mild winters. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Most of Arizona's largest cities are in the Phoenix metropolitan area. The largest city in the state is Phoenix, the aforementioned state capital. After that comes Tucson, which is the largest city in southern Arizona. Numbers three, four, and five, Mesa, Chandler, and Glendale all lie within the Phoenix metro area. As a matter of fact, the remaining five of the top ten are all within the Valley of the Sun. Arizona has 15 counties. The most important county by far is Maricopa County, which hosts the city of Phoenix and most, if not all, of the Valley of the Sun. The largest county by area is Coconino County, which is the second largest county in the lower 48 states after California, San Bernardino County. Coconino County also has Arizona's best known feature, the Grand Canyon. But there is one more very important thing to mention, Indian reservations. Much of Northeastern Arizona doesn't actually belong to Arizona. It belongs to the Navajo Nation, which controls most of Northeastern Arizona and parts of New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah. The nation actually controls the Four Corners Monument, right there. The Hopi Reservation lies within the Navajo Nation and the Hualapai, Tohono O'odham, and the San Carlos Reservation to occupy large plots of land. So how exactly do these reservations work? Basically, they operate as independent lands under the authority of the U.S. Bureau of Indian Affairs, and not in the individual states in which they're located. While many of these reservations are small and uninhabited, Arizona has many large and populous ones, including the Navajo Nation, which is about the size of West Virginia and has over 100,000 100, Navajo living on it. Actually, Arizona has the most land occupied by Indian reservations. Arizona also has six international airports, but the most important one is Phoenix Sky Harbor International, serving Phoenix and most of Arizona. Arizona borders five states, California on the southwest, Nevada on the northwest, Utah on the north, New Mexico on the east, and Colorado on the northeast. Arizona is the most populous of the four corner states. 
the other three of which are Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah. To the south, Arizona borders with Mexico. More specifically, Arizona shares a border with the states of Sonora and Baja California, and the towns of Nogales, Arizona and Nogales, Sonora are some of the famed border towns, which are when a city in the U.S. and Mexico lie just across the border from each other. It can also be used for Canada, but not as often. As such, even though it's not surrounded by American states, the state of Arizona is indeed landlocked. Besides Arizona's natural beauty, which we'll address in the next segment, there are plenty of great things to see and do in the Grand Canyon State. In Phoenix, check out areas like Camelback Mountain or Papago Park for a little slice of the desert in the big city. Then head over to the Heard Museum for a display of all things Southwestern. For you musicians out there, North Phoenix has the Musical Instrument Museum, home to a showcase of musical instruments, music, and musicians from all over the globe. In Scottsdale, famed American architect Frank Lloyd Wright has his Taliesin West Masterpiece home. Hey there, sports fans! Phoenix has all four North American major sports in the form of the Cardinals of football, the D-backs of bas baseball, the Suns of basketball, and the Coyotes of hockey, as well as the Arizona State Sun Devils in Tempe. All over the state, Arizona hosts the Cactus League, which is the spring training home of half of the MLB's 30 franchises, all within the Valley of the Sun. Take it south to Tucson, home of the University of Arizona and the city's historic districts, El Presidio, Barrio Historico, and the Armory Park. Also in Tucson, museums like the Tucson Museum of Art and the Pima Air and Space Museum as well as the oldest Catholic church in the United States, Mission San Xavier del Bac, founded in 1692. I know that London Bridge is falling down, but did you know it was reconstructed in Lake Havasu City in western Arizona? Yeah, and it even crosses over the river named, you guessed it, the Thames. Head east from Lake Havasu City and you'll hit Sedona, one of the modern architectural wonders of the world in the Chapel of the Holy Cross, situated on a cliff in the Coconino National Forest. But let's not kid ourselves. The must-sees in Arizona come built in. All right. Let's talk about physical features in Arizona. We'll address the canyon in the room, the grand one that is, by saying we're gonna get back to it in just a second. But first, Arizona's highest point is located at Humphreys Peak, which is located within the Kachina Peaks Wilderness at Coconino National Forest, right up in here, right, right here. And that's a part of the string of dormant volcanoes called the San Francisco Peaks, no relation to California. They're the remains of a volcano called San Francisco Mountain and Humphreys Peak is its highest point. The lowest point in Arizona is the Colorado River, which lies at above 70 feet below, above sea level. The largest lake in Arizona is Lake Mead, which is a reservoir right here created by the Hoover Dam and located on the Colorado River. However, Arizona shares Lake Mead with Nevada, as Lake Mead is an important source of water for the city of Las Vegas, Nevada. Arizona also shares Lake Powell with Utah, right up in there, as it's another reservoir along the Colorado River. These two are the largest reservoirs in the country when full. The largest lake entirely within the state is Theodore Roosevelt Lake, located right here, which is a reservoir along the Salt River outside of Phoenix. The longest river in the state is the Colorado, which forms the Grand Canyon. The longest river entirely within the state of Arizona is the Little Colorado River, a tributary of the aforementioned Colorado. Although the Gila is a longer river and is a tributary of the Colorado, its source is actually in New Mexico, before crossing the border into Arizona and it crosses the state, where it flows into the Colorado River. Arizona has a very warm climate with blazing hot summers, often peaking near 120 degrees in mild, in mild winters. In the southwest, you'll find an arid desert climate, and across much of the west of the rest of the state, rather, there's a semi-arid or Mediterranean climate. For the most part, though, the state remains extremely hot in the summer and mildly cool in the winters. So why does it get so hot in the Arizona summers? Well, for starters, it is in the desert, which we'll get to, I promise. On top of that, Arizona is landlocked which means that an ocean, which is the major climate decider, as you'll see with California and Florida, does not get to regulate Arizona's temperatures. Let's get back to those deserts. It should be no surprise to anyone that Arizona is arid, although that's not where their name comes from. Regardless, Arizona shares a large portion of the Sonoran Desert with California, Nevada, and Mexico, as well as bits of the Mojave Desert up here in the west and the Chihuahuan Desert over here in the east. And these deserts live unique species like saguaro and organ pipe cacti, which are endemic or native and found mainly in that area. But don't let the desert fool you. In cities like Flagstaff and Tucson, you can go skiing. And in the far north of the state, it will even snow. Up there, you'll find alpine forests full of fir and evergreens that will convince you that you're in Colorado. But head just south and you can see Arizona's beautiful red rock landscape, which has enchanted the native peoples and tourists alike for centuries. Among the many things this red rock landscape will show you are the wave, the painted desert, the petrified forest, and Arizona's most notable physical feature, the Grand Canyon. It is 277 miles long, 18 miles wide, and over a mile deep. 
The canyon was carved out of the very same red rock by the mighty Colorado River, which forced its way through the Colorado Plateau on its way to the Pacific via the Gulf of California, located in Mexico next to the Baja California Peninsula. The canyon is one of Arizona's most notable features, and it even granted the state its nickname, the Grand Canyon State. There's even a piece of land right up here called the Arizona Strip, which is cut off from the rest of the state by the Grand Canyon, and is therefore more, simil more culturally similar to Southern Nevada and Utah, as it would have to cross through those two states to get to the rest of Arizona. As a matter of fact, the Colorado Plateau, which spans most of the Four Corner states, is home to nine, nine national parks, two of which are in Arizona, and 18 national monuments which is the highest concentration of National Park Service units outside the Washington, D.C. metro area. Let's talk about Arizona parks. Arizona has three national parks, the aforementioned Grand Canyon, the Petrified Forest, and Saguaro National Park. Saguaro is not located on the plateau, but rather in the vast Sonoran Desert to the southwest. Of the 18 national monuments on the Colorado Plateau, five are in Arizona, like Canyon de Chez, Wuptaki, Walnut Canyon, and Sunset Crater Volcano. After taking in all of those beautiful sights and sounds, you're probably pretty hungry and looking for some good local eats. Arizona will not disappoint. Most of the state's food is influenced by the Navajo Nation, which inhabited much of the state prior to European influence. Much of this food is also influenced by those Europeans, as the Spaniards occupied Arizona and the Southwest until Mexico took it over and eventually lost it to the United States. As such, much of what we would consider to be Southwestern cuisine falls into this category. Take burritos, for example. They aren't exclusive to Arizona, or even the Southwest, but they definitely originated in the area. The chimichanga, which is just throwing that burrito into the deep fryer, is supposedly an Arizona invention. Other Hispanic-inspired foods include salsa, tamales, and pozole, all of which are influenced by the native tribes of Mexico and Spanish influences in Mexico and the Southwest. One particularly notable one is the Sonoran hot dog, which is a hot dog wrapped in bacon and topped with pinto beans, onions, tomatoes, mayo, and mustard. There are also plenty of dishes influenced by Arizona's native population. First and foremost, fry bread. This bread is unique to the Navajo reservation and Navajo families and food trucks across the Southwest. So what is it? Well, it's a deep fried fr flatbread, hence the name fry bread. That's not all though. You can top that fry bread with beef, cheese, shredded lettuce, tomatoes, and an assortment of other toppings. That is called a Navajo taco. There's also piki bread, a light and crispy corn-based staple of Hobie communities. Drawing on the Southwest, you can also find red chile stew, which is popular in Pueblo and Oodham communities. There seems to be one dish, however, that Arizona could claim as their own. And unless you're from Arizona, you probably don't know what it is, as it's scarcely found outside the state. It's called a cheese crisp, which is basically a tortilla topped with cheese and baked until crispy. But wait, Marcel, you say, isn't that just a, a quesadilla? Oh, don't tell an Arizonan that. There is one key difference separating the cheese crisp from its more popular cousin. A quesadilla is folded over. A cheese crisp is served cheese side up, just like a pizza. Wanna wash all that down? Sneak a taste of sun tea, which is just what it sounds like. Tea brewed in the sun. So how do these Arizonans identify themselves? Well, just over half the population is white at 54.4%. Then 31.6% are Hispanic or Latino, 5.3% are Amer American Indian or Alaska Native, mostly of the Navajo and Hopi tribes, 5.1% are Black or African American, 3.7% are Asian, 2.9% are mixed race, and just 0.3% are Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander. Once again, you know the drill. The most commonly and widely spoken language in Arizona is English, and the second most is Spanish. No surprises there. So what's in third? Navajo, if you can believe it. It's a distant third and spoken mainly in the Northeast, but it is the third most common in the state. Afterwards comes an assortment of Native American languages, and then German in fifth. Arizona's history is, once again, long and storied. There is evidence that people have inhabited what we now know as Arizona for upwards of 25,000 years. The native peoples would build settlements for thousands of years, and some even consider the Hopi settlement at Oraibi, which was established in the year 1150, to be the oldest continually inhabited settlement in the United States. Fast forward about four centuries to the 1530s, when Spaniards in Mexico began to tell stories of the seven lost cities of Cibola, located somewhere in the Arizona region. The first recorded Spaniard to enter Arizona was the Franciscan priest, Fray Marcos de Niza, but he returned to Mexico soon after. Francisco Vasquez de Coronado then led an expedition in the 1540s to find the lost cities of Cibola and conquer the American Southwest for Spain, the latter of which he did. Coronado also became the first European to see the Grand Canyon. 
By 1675, several Franciscan missionaries had popped up across the states to convert the native uh, Hopi to Christianity. However, the Hopi were not too keen on having the Spanish in town, so they rose up in 1680 and drove the Spanish out in what became known as Pueblo or Popeye's Rebellion, which to date remains the only successful rebellion of Native Americans against Europeans. I should probably note here that Arizona's history is very much tied to that of New Mexico, as the two states would be ceded to the United States in 1848, and the southern half of both states were added to the U.S. in 1853 with the Gadsden Purchase. Ten years later, Arizona would split from New Mexico and become the Arizona Territory, and the southern half of the territories of both Arizona and New Mexico were claimed for the Confederacy as Arizona Territory during the beginning of the Civil War. As the trains came into the established territory, copper mining became a prevalent industry, as it still is today. Arizona's mines produce over two-thirds of the nation's copper. Northern Arizona also received an influx of Mormon settlers in the post-Civil War years, as the Mormons were beginning to disperse from Utah into the rest of the Southwest, and Arizona was even included in the proposed state of Deseret, which was a Mormon state that would have covered most of the Southwest. In 1881, a very famous gunfight at the OK Corral in Tombstone took place, and in 1886, the Apache people led a rebellion against white settlers on lands in southern Arizona and New Mexico. Ultimately, their leader, Geronimo, would surrender. On Valentine's Day of 1912, and just a little bit over a month after New Mexico, Arizona joined the Union as State 48, once again, not sponsored, but, you know, if you want to, and completed the lower 48 states. In the post-World War II years, Arizona has become one of the fastest growing areas of the United States, with booming industry and opportunity and a warm, sunny climate. As of 2019, Arizona is the sixth fastest growing state in the United States. So in conclusion, Arizona is a state that has thrived under the blazing desert sun, providing a winter home for the rest of the country when it's cold, and rising up to become one of America's most important states, all under the backdrop of a red rocks and the setting desert sun. Thank you all for sticking around till the end of the video. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me and the channel out. We'll be back sooner next time, I promise, because we are going to the home state of Walmart, and a lot of other things too, nestled in the Washita Mountains of Arkansas. I'm Marcel Van Hemmert. Remember to keep exploring your world.